Hey guys, Missy Kitten here. Welcome back to Crime File Friday. Today we are going to be talking about the murder of Maddie Clifton. And I think that's about as much introduction as we need. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So this happened November 3rd, 1998 in Jacksonville, Florida. Our victim was Madeline Ray Clifton, born July 17th, 1990. She was only eight years old. Our killer was Joshua Phillips. He was born March 17th, 1984, and at the time of this, he was 14. So on November 3rd, 1998, Eight-year-old Maddie Clifton went to her neighbor, 14-year-old Josh Phillips' house, and asked him to play basketball, or baseball, sorry, not basketball. Josh, who was home alone, agreed even though he wasn't supposed to have company when his parents weren't around. According to Josh, sometimes, sometime while they were playing, he accidentally hit Maddie in the eye with a baseball. Now, Maddie began to cry and scream Josh, absolutely terrified of his abusive father coming home and seeing this, dragged Maddie into his home, and here he strangled her and hit her, I believe, multiple times with his bat. He then shoved Maddie, who was unconscious, he wasn't, I don't think he was aware that she was unconscious, he thought she was dead, under his bed, and about 5 p.m., Maddie's mother reported her missing. You know, she didn't come home. She knew that she had been out playing, but she didn't come home, so she reported her missing. Maddie regained consciousness around sundown and began to make noise. It was then that Josh removed his mattress and used his multi-purpose Leatherman tool to slit her throat and stab her seven times in the chest. After he placed his waterbed mattress back on the frame over her, Authorities and residents searched for Maddie, and Josh even aided in these searches, you know, despite knowing exactly what happened to her. Police searched the Phillips' home three times, and each time they believed that what they were smelling was from Josh's bird cages. On Tuesday, November 10th, Josh's mother, Melissa, was cleaning her son's room when she noticed a wet spot. Now, she just assumed that his waterbed was leaking. Well, upon closer inspection, she discovered the body of little Maddie Clifton, and she notified police. Now, the tight-knit community was shocked, and Phillip's trial had to be moved to Polk County due to basically, you know, everyone knowing everyone, people already having their opinions, you can't get a fair jury. The prosecution disputed parts of Josh's story. Harry Shorstein, the state attorney, suggested that it may have been sexually motivated. Phyllis had allegedly talked about sexual matters with both Maddie and her older sister. The autopsy, however, showed no signs of sexual assault. Phillips claimed that Maddie's clothes had come off while he dragged her inside, but the prosecution argued that the lack of dirt and sand on her body meant otherwise. They also noted how there was no blood found in the backyard or on the baseball that Josh said hit Maddie. Further poking holes in his story. He was tried as an adult, and the defense didn't call a single witness. The trial lasted only two days. It's a really quick trial, especially for murder. And the jury deliberated for two hours before declaring Josh Phillips guilty of first-degree murder. He was sentenced to life without parole. Since he was under the age of 16, he was not eligible for the death penalty. In 2012, it was ruled that sentencing juveniles to mandatory life without parole was unconstitutional. In November of 2017, Josh Phillips was resentenced to life. 
The Clifton family said that Maddie resonated with people. She played piano. She had a zest for life. Her sister said when she watched TV, she would root for the scary characters because she didn't like the thought of people or things feeling lonely or isolated. A lot of what Josh Phillips said in this case was he was afraid of his alcoholic, abusive father. But, you know, your fear can only take you so far. He, I get that he was scared that, he was scared that his dad would come home and see what happened and, you know, he wasn't supposed to have people over or anything like that when his parents weren't home and I guess he was scared of the punishment, but, you know, your fear can only take you so far. You know, it, it can excuse everything that you do. And in this case, the alleged fear resulted in a little girl losing her life. And he was obviously very well aware of what he did because, you know, he went and joined the search parties. You know, he kept it hidden. He went back in, you know, after she started making noises, she, he went back in and slit her throat and stabbed her. He was well aware of what he was doing. And you would think he would be more afraid of the trouble he would get in for it. That, though, I guess prison keeps you away from your abusive dad. I do believe, I do believe that his father was abusive. I do remember hearing that his mother talked about him being abusive as well. So it wasn't just from Josh that his dad was abusive. But again, I am very sorry that these ones have been so short. Um, very short cases. But... It always baffles me when anyone, especially law enforcement, mistakes a dead body smell for animals, because that was very prominent in John Wayne Gacy's case, was, you know, everyone's like, man, what's that smell? Because, you know, he had all the bodies in his crawl space. And he was like, oh, it's just my dog. We're potty training it. I don't, I don't know what a dead person smells like, but I have been told it is such a distinct smell. So how you can mistake it for animals, I don't, I don't get that. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.